Okay, in this chapter, we'll learn how to do the integration of any complicated function by using Simpson 3.8 rule for integration. More details on this topic can be found by going to this link. You are free to share this work under the following conditions. Alright, so chapter 07.08 Simpson 3A rule for integration. Let us say, suppose we want to integrate any complicated function f of x between the limit from a to b as indicated in equation 1. Now, f of x is a given function. So, suppose the function is too complicated to be done analytically, then the numerical approximation approach will be the main idea is that to replace this complicated given function f of x by some simpler function and usually those simpler function is in the form of the polynomial function f sub i where i indicate the degree or the order of the polynomial function so for example if we replace the given complicated function f of x by the polynomial f sub 1, let's say i equal to 1. What it means is that we replaced the given function f of x by the straight line or linear function. On the other hand, if we replaced the given function f of x by the polynomial function f sub 2, i equal to 2, it means we replace the given function f of x by the quadratic function and so on, so on, so on, okay? Uh, and is one more example, if we can also replace the given function f of x by the polynomial function f sub 3, i equal to 3, it means we replace the given function f of x by the cubic polynomial function, okay? And the reason we want to do that because uh, a polynomial function, whether or not it is a straight line or linear function or quadratic function or cubic function, they are very, very easy to integrate. So, if you remember from another chapter that you have already learned, which we call Simpson one-third rule. In the Simpson one-third rule, the main idea is we replace the given function f of x by the so-called second order or quadratic polynomial function. So, in other words, we replace the f of x by the quadratic function as indicated in equation 2. So, f of f2 of x equal to a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. And for this equation, of course, the unknown will be a0, a1, and a2. Because if we know those coefficients, a0, a1, and a2, the polynomial function f of 2, which is a quadratic function, can be found. And then after that, instead of integrating the real function f of x, we just integrate with the approximated quadratic function f2 of x. And everybody can easily integrate the quadratic function. Okay. However, in this chapter, we are interested in using the so-called Simpson 3.8 rule for integration. And in order to derive the so-called Simpson 3.8 rule, the procedure is the same, the main idea is the same. The only thing different is that we replace the complicated given function f of x by using the third order or cubic polynomial function passing through four data points. So, the whole idea here is we say, let us try to uh, replace the given function by the cubic polynomial function f3 of x. Now, we all know that the, the approximated Q 
cubic function f3 of x it is a third order polynomial or cubic equation and therefore the it can be expressed as f3 of x equal to a naught plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a3x to the power 3 that cubic equation can be represented in the matrix notation as shown in equation 3 which is basically equal to the first uh, thing which is 1 comma x comma x square comma x q this is a matrix with one row and four columns multiply with the unknown coefficient a0, a1, a2, a3 which basically is a matrix with four row and one column so as you can see according to the matrix multiplication rule because these two number match so the result of that will be a one by one scalar function which is f3 of x as you can see you multiply uh, one with a naught you get this term and then x time a1 then we got the next term and so on so on so the question now become if we can replace a given function f of x by a cubic or third order polynomial function f3 of x then we can easily integrate the cubic equation between any two limits now of course if you look at equation 3 the unknown will be the coefficient a0, a1, a2 and a3 so we have those four unknown and therefore we need to have four equation how do we get to forget those four equation well we can get those four equation by using four known data points so let's take a look at the next slide but before showing you this equation four I want to go back to the earlier slide that sh should give you the picture of the uh, function okay but anyway so the question is, is this if you can take a look at the picture suppose this is x is a horizontal axis and f of x represent the function let's say the given function is a very complicated function it looks like this okay between the limit of the from x equal to a to x equal to b our objective is to integrate that function which represented by this let's say complicated function f of x now the idea like I told you before using the Simpson 3-8 rule is by approximating the given function f of x by the cubic polynomial function and we all know that the cubic polynomial function will need to passing through four data points let's see the first data point is here and then another data point is here the third data point is here and the last data point is there so if we can approximate the given function which is represented by the red curve by the cubic approximated function going through those four data points so those is represented like f3 is a function of x so f3 is a simple cubic polynomial that is the approximation of the complicated f of x function so obviously the main idea now is can we how do we find out f3 of x as I said to you earlier according to equation 3 we have four unknown coefficient a0 a1 a2 and a3 and therefore we need to have four equation those four equation can be obtained using the four known data points such as point a 
point B, capital B, point C, and point D. Okay? So now, let us try to evaluate at those point capital A, B, C, D. Now, we need to uh, refer back to the previous uh, slide. S now, as you can see, for the four point capital A, B, C, D, the coordinate will be, let's say call X0, X1, X2, and X3. And as you can see, basically we can say these intervals are have the same width, which we call it H. H. So, according to this figure, we can see the width or the interval of each segment is equal to B, which is the uh, upper limit of the integral, minus A, which is the lower limit of the integral, and then divide by three segments. We have four data points, A, B, C, D, and therefore we have three segments. Okay? So the definition is this. X0 is equal to A, which is the lower limit. X3 is equal to B, which is the upper limit of the integral. And X1, X2 is the interior point. And keep in mind that every segment have the same width. So with this definition, based on that picture, as you can see, the next thing we say is when we substitute the cubic polynomial function when x equal to x naught, so every time whenever we see x, we replace by x naught. Okay? Uh, there's a typing error here. This one should be raised to the power 3 power 3, power 3, and power 3. So when you replace x by x naught, what we have is a function at x naught. Similarly, in order to evaluate f at x1, we just have to replace in the cubic polynomial function x replaced by x1, x square become x1 square, x q become x1 q. And so on for the next uh, point. We want to have figure out the function at x2. So whenever we see x, we replace by x2. x square replaced by x2 square. xq replaced by x2q. And the same thing is true for f at x3. So as you can see from equation 4, we have four equation. And keep in mind that x0, x1, x2, x3, they are known. The same thing for fx0, fx1, fx2, fx3 are known. And the four unknown, as I said before, is a0, a1, a2, a3. Now these four equations and four unknown as indicated in equation four can also be expressed in the matrix notation as shown in equation 5. And as you can see, in equation 5, the vector that contain A0, A1, A2, A3, they are the unknown vector. Everything else is known. On the right-hand side vector is known. The coefficient 4 by 4 matrix is also known. Now, equation 5 can also be expressed in the more condensed form, where the 4 by 4 coefficient matrix, we call it a matrix A. And then the unknown vector containing A0, A1, A2, A3, we call that is the vector A. And the right hand side known vector F, we call it vector F. So equation 6 is just a simplified short notation of equation 5. So. The idea here is we need to solve for the four unknown. That means we have to solve the simultaneous linear equation. Now, if you look in equation number six, obviously, if you want to solve for the unknown vector A, 